In this calculus lesson, we will talk about two very important concepts. The first one is the average velocity, and the second one is the instantaneous velocity. And with that, we can really get into the calculus part. So let's start. Here is the rocket example that we did last time, and we also have the position of the rocket, which is just the height of the rocket because it's just going up and down. Let's first find its average velocity, and let me just write down, we will find V A V G is just a notation for average velocity, and we will have to have a time interval. Let's just say t is equal to 1 to t is equal to 3. Alright, so for finding the average velocity, it's just the displacement, which is just the change in position over the change in time. So we will have to know the final position, and that's when we plug in 3 into h. So we have h of 3, and the minus initial position, which is when we plug in 1 into h. So we have h of 1, and then over 3 minus 1, because that will give us the uh, changing time. All right, so 3 into t, h of 3 is 96. And then we are going to minus h of 1, which is 64. And let's say if the picture was not given, all you have to do is just plug in 3 into the h, then, and then just work that out. So h of 3 equals negative 16 times 3 squared plus 80 times 3, and then just work that out. That will, of course, give us the same answer. And then, of course, on the bottom, we'll just do 3 minus 1, which is 2. On the top is 32, and divided by 2, we will get 16. And the unit for this is feet per second, because notice the top is the position, which is measured in feet, and then the bottom is the time, which is measured in second. That's why it's feet per second. And that will be it. And keep in mind, this is really just the slope formula, because we can see that this is just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right. So let me illustrate what exactly is going on right here with the picture. Remember, I just mentioned it that it's the slope formula. So right here, let's graph y is equal to h of t. So it's going to be the t-axis here, and then this is going to be the y, which is the height. And because this equation is a quadratic, so we will get a parabola like this. All right. So when t is equal to 1, let's say it's somewhere right here. So this is when t is equal to 1, and we have 64. And then let's say when we have t is equal to 3, let's say it's somewhere right here. And that will give us 96. And again, all we did was finding the slope of this line. And we call this the secant line because it's a line that goes through this and that. There are two points. It went through the curve like this. So you see, y2 is 96, and y1 is 64, and then 3 minus 1. So the slope is, in fact, the average rate of change in general. Now, for part B, of course, here is the main part right here. We are going to find the instantaneous, so let me just write this down, instantaneous velocity. And when we're talking about instantaneous velocity, we just need a time. So let's say at time is equal to 1. It's just this specific time. So what exactly are we trying to find? Well, in this case, let's use what we talked about earlier. The velocity is the slope. Earlier, it was the average. So it was just the slope between two points. Now, we are going to find the slope at only one point. And it sounds crazy, but we'll, we'll see how we can actually do it. So here's the graph again. And this time, though, we just care about when t is equal to 1. And then, of course, the height is 64. And we're just looking at this point. And we are going to draw a tangent line, meaning just a line that touches the curve at this point. So now, the biggest question is, how can we find the slope of this tangent line? Because we only know one point, 1, 1,64. For the slope, we really need to have two points, right? Hmm. 
So why don't we just put another point on the curve? Let's say we have this point here. This time, I'm not going to label this as 3, but rather I will just label this as t. And then, of course, we can do what we did earlier. We can connect the dots, and you can see that we have this blue line. And of course, the blue line looks very different than the red line. But imagine if we can move this point as closer to 1 as possible, like this. So imagine if this point is actually somewhere here instead, then you can see that once we connect the dots here and here, aha, the blue line will look more and more like the red line. And with that, if we take the limit, that will actually give us the slope of the tangent line. And that's the idea. So have a look. So firstly, let's write a formula for the slope of this blue line right here. So the only difference between this and what we did earlier is just that right here, we are using 3, but right now we will have to be using t. So the slope formula for this will be h of t minus still h of 1, and then we will have to divide this by t minus 1. And now we have to move it because we really want to have the blue line really, really close to the red line. So that will give us the tangent line, right? And the idea for that is, of course, take the limit. So let's go ahead and take the limit as t going toward 1. Yes, and this right here will really give us the instantaneous velocity and the notation for that is just v of 1. Ta-da! That's it! So this is why we study limits. And by the way, if you look at this, okay, if you plug in 1 into all the t's, on the top you will get h of 1 minus h of 1, which is 0. On the bottom you get 1 minus 1, which is also 0. You will always get 0 over 0. That's why, as I told you, 0 over 0 is perhaps the most common indeterminate form in calculus, at least for calculus 1. Alright, so let's go ahead and solve this. So this right here is the limit as t going toward 1. This time though, for h of t, we're just going to write down the function, which is negative 16t squared plus 80t. And then we still have to minus h of 1, which is 64. And then on the bottom, we have that t minus 1. And remember, as t is approaching 1, you can expect to cancel out the t minus 1. Okay, on the top, we can factor that. We can first factor out a negative 16, and then we get t squared minus 5t plus 4 over t minus 1. And then we can do it again, factor that quadratic trinomial. This is the limit as t going toward 1. On the bottom is t minus 1. On the top is negative 16 times t minus 1 times t minus 4. And as I told you, t minus 1, t minus 1, cancel. So we are going to just go ahead and put down the 1 into the t. So we have negative 16 times 1 minus 4. So this is negative 16 times negative 3. And finally, we just get positive 48. And again, this is feet per second. So this right here is how we find the instantaneous velocity. So have a look. This is the connection between the average velocity and the instantaneous velocity.